Hi, this is Chris Hoy. Thank you for joining me on Create with Chris for this acrylic painting tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to easily paint this awesome Halloween project step by step from start to finish. So let's get started. The surface I'm using is made out of MDF and I have pre-sealed it with multi-purpose sealer just to ensure that the paint will adhere well. I'm using my three-quarter inch oval wash and just kind of applying a thin layer of Payne's Gray. Let it dry and apply a second coat. I didn't push it clear to the edges because it's going to um, be covered up with the top piece and I thought that might make it easier to glue together. I am base coating the pumpkins with red spice. Again, this is a thin coat. I am pulling the paint towards the cut edges so that helps prevent from dripping over the sides. Use thin paint, apply a couple layers, um, usually works out best. For this, I'm just trying to get it on nice and smooth hoping that one layer is going to cover it well. I do have highlights and shading to add. So this is just a first base coat. Smoothing it out pretty nicely. Same brush and Heritage Brick, darkening the bottom probably about oh, two thirds, maybe a little, just a little over half. Now I'm going to get just a little bit of Spice Pumpkin and highlight the tops. Now it looks really bright, but this is a very thin wash of paint. It's going to dry a lot darker. Wanted to get this out of the way um, so I can paint the back side and see what, how it looks. Just kind of touching up that bottom heritage brick. I applied the tombstone with Portobello and used a filbert, just the shape of the tombstone using my epic script liner this is 18 odd and warm white to create the spider web and also using that same epic script liner to write the lettering now if your brush is loaded correctly you shouldn't have any trouble at all painting the letters obviously i did not have mine loaded well uh, you know when it's just perfect because you can paint for a long time before you have to reload I dried it and grabbing a little bit of Payne's Gray, just want to kind of age that tombstone with a little bit of shade. Thinking my highlights are on the top left from the moon. So I have warm white on my Epic Script Liner. Just going to highlight the, top, the bottom edge of that crack, deepen that left side with Payne's Gray, and make that look just checking to make sure that it's kind of situated where it makes sense. Brighten that highlight up a little bit. And what's nice about using a Payne's Gray background, if you need to touch anything up, just grab a little Payne's Gray. You can alter anything super easily. Brightening up all the highlights. And then I decided that the lettering was just a little bit too weak, so I'm just top coating that with another um, layer of Payne's Gray and that looks a lot better. You just you just put the top on there and you can see if it's going to need straightened or adjusted. Using warm white to splatter some stars in the background with just a tap and I have my Painter's Pal. I'm using that to stencil perfect foliage green oval eyes. With the stencil, I'm using my Spectacular Stencil Brush. It's a brush I designed. It's a super wonderful stencil brush. If you're not good at stenciling, I think you're going to love this brush. It, I, I never like to stencil. These bristles are super soft and just create a beautiful stencil every time. Two light coats is always better than one heavy coat. I load my brush well, wipe it over a paper towel to remove the excess paint, and then lightly tap it on to get a nice coverage. Give it a quick dry. And I've sped the film up just a little bit so that we don't have to sit here and watch the paint dry and um, 
it just helps the video speed up a little bit faster so we can get kind of get to the bones of the painting but do take your time and do your strokes well using my eighth inch awesome angle to float warm white across the bottom of the eyeballs just because they're small doesn't mean you can skip some of these little details and i always say a little bit of paint makes such a big difference plantation pine up in the top left and these eyeballs are going to go from flat cartoony eyeballs to really dimensional um, eyeballs that it, it makes a huge difference using the handle end of my epic script liner to dip dot the pupils uh, don't keep the pupils in the same place you can kind of move them around and create different looks epic script liner and warm white just to line those eyebrows and I've dried the pupils and add a small dot of warm white on the top left of each one and that looks great I just traced the skeleton on but I want to make sure it's in the right place going back with my stylus to kind of I thought maybe it would be easier than splattering to just dip dot some stars in the background I like the look of the splatter you get up um, more diverse splattering sizes when you paint the skeleton keep it very simple don't overthink it I'm using my number two radical round and thin snow white and you can see I just painted around the eyes and the nose and that's all I did to create the skull one stroke for the neck one stroke for each arm bone don't make this difficult just the ribs one two three four keep it very simple it doesn't have to to be detailed to look detailed and that sounds a little bit like an oxymoron but there's his backbone kind of a triangle shaped pelvic bone just stroke that in there add his leg bones and a few little finger bones and basically that's it now I did go in with my stylus to add a dip dot where the bones connect to give it so they're not floating bones give it some connectivity and I'm going in the mouth was just a dark area I have my epic script liner and I'm just kind of crisscrossing to make it look like teeth in there I am going to go back and brighten up a little bit on his forehead and add finger bones it doesn't take much to to really give good detail and if you make it too white just go back and float a little bit of Payne's gray I am going to splatter but I decided I maybe could get a paper towel down there to kind of help mask it off don't need a lot of splatter I didn't I don't want it to look like snow that's why I didn't want it in front of the whatever I'm painting so you know when you do your splattering normally I use a splatter brush I thought maybe I'd have a little more control I am stroking in with my number three spectacular stencil brush a little bit of warm white behind the candle flame to create that halo using the number two radical round to stroke that candle barrel in very thinly just a few strokes I don't want it solid and heavy I want the candle flame solid and heavy so that is a little bit stronger and I'm making the wax drip stronger as well and you can see the difference in the tone of the paint don't make your wax drips all the same length kind of stagger them up, just a little more interesting that way float a little bit of Payne's gray um, below the wax drips down the side of the candle and then I added a few little uh, floats of Payne's gray on the wax as well to give it that look of layers of wax going back with my epic script liner just to brighten the highlights up and to really shape those wax strips sticking with my epic script liner I just top coated that candle flame with moon yellow I want it to be bright epics or I'm sorry the spectacular stencil brush just top coat that halo a little bit if you put that yellow right on the blue it just turns green immediately so that white background is perfect floating a little bit of red spice along the bottom of the candle 
and a little bit of a white, warm white sparkle in there to make it dance. The candle wick is Payne's Gray. Moving to the spider body, stenciling it with just one coat of Portobello. I only wanted one coat because I didn't want him real bright. And I just made sure when I stenciled it on that it was nice and smooth. Again, I took most of the dry time out so it would go a little quicker. Highlight the top of it with warm white. And then I'm going to smooth that in. Deepen the bottom edge with Payne's Gray. You need it a little darker than brighter. The legs are Portobello. And again, I'm using my Epic Script Liner. Need to make sure your spider legs are visible when the top frame is applied. And I wanted to double check to make sure that that little hanging web is not covered up by the center part of the O. Going to brighten the top edges of the legs with warm white. Just a few touches. You don't have to use a lot of paint. And again, my paint is very thin. Dip dotting warm white eyes and adding warm white eyebrows. A few little dashes of warm white to brighten that hanging web up. And then I can go back and see what a difference adding that little extra pop of white to highlight the tops of those legs. Just makes such a big difference. Dip dot the pupils with Payne's Gray and we'll add a small teeny tiny warm white highlight in the top left. I did underscore the eyebrows with Payne's Gray to give them a little more density. Now I, the ghost is just a matter of simple floats. And I started out with a quarter inch angle. It was too big and bulky and I couldn't swing all those little curves. So I switched to my eighth inch awesome angle, which is just absolutely perfect. And basically just floating around the outer edges to form the ghost body and keeping the heavy paint toward the outer edges. Keep this very simple and translucent. The hint of color in the body is just going to be a little stronger where the highlights are, the top of his tummy, the top of his hands. Um, I like to have the face a little bit brighter just so it is more visible. But it's just such a simple way to create a ghost and it just doesn't take much time at all. I have my Epic Script Liner and Warm White just going to outline the body shape and just the simple little stroke is huge because it adds more definition to the outer edges so even the ghost is if the ghost is very thin and translucent it's still going to have specific volume i'm using spiced pumpkin to paint the bow and top coating that with a little bit of moon yellow to brighten it up Dip dot the eyes, kind of an oval eye with paints gray. And I'm going to be using Spiced Pumpkin for the nose. And paint a little tiny mouth on with paints gray as well. Using the Epic Script Liner. Keep, the, keep all the details very simple. Add a little tiny sparkle white on the top left of each eye and on the top of the nose. Just a really tiny speck is all that is needed. Wanted to brighten the face up just a little bit more. Brighten those highlights up on the hands. And I wasn't crazy where those background splatters landed. So I'm just going to cover them up with Payne's Gray. I want the head to have a real nice shape to it. Using my Mono Zero Eraser, which is my favorite tool that I have every time I paint. It's a teeny tiny eraser. It gets into all those little tiny areas. Cleans up those tracing lines so nicely. Blush a little bit of Spice Pumpkin Cheeks on the Ghost. And I think that looks pretty good. Oh, let's put a little shading there at the base of the arms. 
underneath the arms the bottom of the body just little touches of paint make such a big difference for the cat i'm base coating it with portobello and i've said all along not to fuss too much with um the the details of whatever you're painting i spent more time on the cat than i had intended he got a little wild and crazy so i had to kind of work it out but you can see my strokes are very loose I like the way his fur just kind of flips out in fact I like it so much I did get carried away using Payne's gray my eighth inch awesome angle just to kind of define his tummy his legs and I'm using a little bit of a choppy float stroke and that helps create that look of ruffled fur. There's the inside of his ears and the top of his head. It just really doesn't take much to very simply create that sh uh, cat shape body. He looks pretty good. I'm gonna go in, I use my awesome angle to add uh, I should have switched over to my script liner because I, it gets a little clunky when you want those fine details. You need a fine brush. And uh, I went to my script liner. I want some really crazy hair sticking out of his ears. I wanted to have his whiskers be really wild. And I mean, this little guy is super scared, so he had to be really ruffled. The highlights from the up above, so the top of his shoulders, the hair on the outside of his legs, top of his head, his whiskers are going to be really highlighted. At this point, I think I got, I had a little more than what I had intended. He definitely looks scared, but I've kind of lost the shape of the cat. So what is so nice about this type of painting just going back with Payne's Gray to basically erase any unwanted lines just makes it super easy. Dip dot his eyes foliage green. They were too small, so I went back and added a bigger dot of foliage green. Use the handle end of my brush versus the stylus. Nose is Spice Pumpkin, and I just use the stylus to apply that. Wanted to add a collar, use Spice Pumpkin, my Epic Script Liner, added a moon yellow medallion. I, I didn't want the tag solid. It gives it more look that something's engraved on it. So I left it kind of open. Still determined to put those whisk, those hairs on the tips of his ears. Not liking it. So I just went back, straightened that up, I always encourage you to play because you you know that's how a lot of my favorite designs highlight the top of the collar and the medallion with snow white or warm white but a lot of my favorite designs are a result of different things I played around with so don't be afraid to play around and you know it, it may end up being one of your favorites Going to stroke his little mouth in there. That's with Payne's Gray. A little bit of plantation pine on the top left of the eyes. Same thing we did for the other eyes. A little bit of warm white on the bottom. A touch of highlight on the tip of the nose. These little details make a big difference. It's not so much what you do, it's just those little details that have such big effect. Dip dot the pupils, plantation pine. I want to brighten his chin up a little bit. It was too dark and it was kind of blending in with his neck. I needed to separate that out just a little bit more. Shape his face up. I 
I spent a little more time on the cat than I had intended, but I really like the way he turned out. Going back, I wanted to make his mouth just a little bit more open, a little more shocked look. So I just enlarged it a little bit with the Payne's Gray. Adding just a dip dot of Snow White in each eye, nose, and then on the right side of his lip, just to brighten that up. He looks pretty good, but I thought maybe he needed a little more shading under his collar, that little tag blended out and his face was very flat so I shaded it a little bit under the eyes and the nose again just that little bit of paint makes a big difference love how he turned out the witch I kind of dreaded painting the witch um, but it was probably a super simple just did a wash on her face with foliage green and I'm using my eighth inch angle and portobello just to kind of stroke float the cape and her dress. Wanted to keep this very translucent and gauzy and tattered. Uh, fussy painting is not needed. You just need to know where your strokes are going to go. Make sure she is front and center in that cutout. Fluttered her nose on and her chin. I know she had a big nose and a big chin. Highlight that with a little bit of warm white. Kind of stroking in the first layer of hair with red spice. Kind of helps put everything. I, I do a little bit everywhere. It kind of pulls it together. It all evolves at the same time. Warm white just kind of outline and create that tatter on the end of her cape and then I'm using my eighth inch angle to just really highlight the tip of that cape her hat her nose her chin pull some spice pumpkin highlights in her hair one thing nice about a witch you don't have to worry about having a uh, perfect hair anything works Spice Pumpkin Hat Band. Add two little teeny tiny eyes and a mouth. Highlight those eyes with just a touch of warm white. Huge difference. Don't forget to highlight. Kind of straightening her hair around her face. Add a few shadows in there. When you add highlights, it really pushes the dark areas back and creates beautiful contrast. So when you first put those highlights on there, they seem a little stark and then all of a sudden they just really balance out. I had not intended on putting her hands in there, but it needed something. So I decided to just put her hands in there and then drape the cape around her arms. And it worked out really well. A little bit of shading. The hands are foliage green. Shade it with the uh, plantation pine. And then deepen it a little bit with Payne's Gray. And I'm going to enhance that shading below the cape and around her hands with the Payne's Gray. I love to do this. It's just a lot of fun to create all those layers. And it just seems like it's almost kind of magical. It just evolves. Little touches of Payne's Gray here and there just to separate, create contrast. A little bit under the hat, around her face. The eyeballs on the last letter are the same as before. I did decide I didn't like the point of the hat, which was kind of funny because it doesn't show, but I decided I had to fix it, and it does look much better, but you don't see it, <laughs> so not sure it does any good. Uh, back to the pumpkins. I'm going to skip a big part of this because there's a lot of repetition. I loaded the toe of my half-inch awesome angle with Payne's Gray just to 
deepen along the bottom. I'm kind of doing what I call my wiggle float, pulling it up and down to create definition between the pumpkins and pulling it up a little bit to kind of create that look of ridges um, in some small way just to add the darkness. Painted the stems with uh, Payne's Gray and I decided the half inch angle was just an overkill so switched over to the Radical Round, number six radical or number five Radical Round. I can go in there and at the base of the pumpkin stem just kind of round that out. It looks so much better and it's a lot neater. I thought I would just use the brush that was in my hand. It just didn't work. I picked up a little bit of moon yellow and I'm doing the same thing on the top that I did on the bottom. Just kind of that wiggle float floating across and pulling down to create that look of the sections and bright, brightening the top of the pumpkins up. The, the paint is very, very thin so that it's easy to move around and manipulate and I can go back and it's not nearly as bright as it looks. Um, the paint when it's wet always appears much brighter on camera. But you can see how I pull it down. It's just a super way to add quick texture. And highlight it all in the same one fell swoop. Now if I need more I can go back and brighten it. But We'll let that go for now. I decided to add ridges on the pumpkin stems using my incredible comb and thin portobello and just pulling it up the stems to create that ridge, ridge work. I'm using the same incredible comb with thin plantation or Payne's Gray to pull up from the bottom. Now don't make this look like grass. You want it to be soft and just that hint of ridges. To add the bats, I am using a stencil, using the number four spectacular stencil brush. I load my brush well, wipe it on a paper towel to remove excess paint, and stencil the bat on. Now you might need two coats depending on if, it, if it's dark enough. I usually put two very light thin coats on. Um, again, as opposed to one heavy coat, just you'll have much better luck. And just a very soft pouncing to create those bats. Love using bat stencils. It makes it so easy and has so much fun to have bats on there. Kind of added them here and there. After I got these finished, I did decide to go back and add a few more. So you can add as few or as many as you like. I did get kind of zealous and over stenciled a couple areas. Had to wipe that off. Loaded my eighth inch awesome angle with portobello. And I'm just floating across the top of the wings. And then I'm using the chisel edge of my brush to chop down each one of those wings. And then I go across the top of his head, his ears, and down the right side of his body. I will actually show this one on camera. Float across the top, chop down those ribs. One, two, and then across his head, his ears, and float on his body. And I did do this rather quickly because you don't want a whole lot of fussy painting. This is eerie, it's Halloween, it's loose. It's just supposed to be very whimsical. And the portobello will dry just a little bit darker so it's not going to be as bright as it looks. It's a great shade color. Now I'm adding a drop shadow, which is simply a thin coat of Payne's Gray. I'm using my number five radical round, kind of emulating the same shape as the bat. It's not identical, it's not exact. It's just enough to really make it look like it's 
casting a shadow on those pumpkins. Now to make these bats really stand out, grabbing a little bit of warm white on my Epic Script Liner, just going to highlight those, look what a difference that makes, just those top edges of the wings, those ribs, the little ears, and the side of the body. Huge, absolutely huge. Now that shading looked pretty good, but after you add this warm white on there, it just really makes it stand out and pop. Make sure you have your brush loaded correctly so that you can paint quite a bit before you have to reload and your strokes will be absolutely wonderful and easy to create. Remember all the supplies are available at Cupboard Distributing CDWood.com. So if you need anything, please go www.cdwood.com. I do have a printable pattern that is available, and it does include um, instructions, step-by-step, -step, color photo, traceable. Click the link below. I am going back with a little bit of Payne's Gray to shade on the left side of each one of the pumpkins. Here is the finished piece. I think it turned out fantastic. I love it. I hope you give it a try. If you do, please share your finished project on, face on Facebook and hashtag me, Chris Hoy. And remember, everything is available at cdwood.com. I hope you learned some new tips, tricks, and techniques to make your painting life a little easier and a lot more fun. I hope you realize that painting small doesn't have to be tedious and time-consuming. I hope you will check out some of my other videos on YouTube. Please share, like, and subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell if you don't want to miss out on any of my upcoming videos. I thank you for joining me, and I look forward to our next painting.